Hey guys, so I do not work today, but I have several appointments, and so I thought I'd make a video for you while I wait for my first appointment to start. Um, so, <laughs> last night I had an appointment with my dietitian. Yes, my life is full of appointments, obviously. Seriously, like, people at work, they don't know about my issues, they just know I have lots of appointments. And I'm sure they're guessing. I'm sure they're like, what the heck is wrong with her? She seems so normal. They've said that to me. They're like, you look fine to me. Like, why do you need all these appointments? And I'm like, um, you know, <laughs> health condition. <laughs> so, um, sorry, off topic. Um, I saw my dietitian and she's lovely. I love her. Um, and so Viv, um, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I had all this pent up. Um, I don't know, defiance in me. And like, she asked, like, she asked me, you know, like, what's on your mind? Like, what are you feeling? And all of this like came out, like I verbally purged all over the place for like an hour and a half. Like we went over a half hour. Thank God I was last, her last appointment. But I mean, I just like kept going and going and I don't know. It was like all this like anger and frustration and defiance and, just, um, it's so weird because it's, it's weird because I don't think like we're possessed necessarily <laughs> by our eating disorders, but it is kind of crazy because I definitely can tell when I've switched to my eating disorder talking. And I mean, it's like, and I've seen it happen in people. It's in their eyes. It's in their coloring. It's just in just, I don't know, a vibe you get for them from them. And so um, my eating disorder just, like, started talking, and it was, like, so angry and defiant, and, like, you know, I don't want to get better, and, like, whatever, you know, <laughs> and, like, screw this, and I don't know, it was, it was interesting, some good things really came out of it, I, I don't know, it was good talking to her, because she reminded me of why I want to get better, and why it's worth it. And I think we need those people in our lives um, who remind us again and again. Like we need constant reminders of why it's worth it and why why we want to get better and why our eating disorder is so lame. <laughs> like we just need that. And so I'm so thankful and I really hope you guys have a good support system back home because I would be, I would have crashed a lot sooner and a lot harder if I did not have the support system that I have. I'll be, I'm not doing two grand right now, but I'm holding on and I think that's what counts and I'm remaining positive and I'm not being completely hopeless, but I have my days. I have my days where I just feel like I want to give up. I am done. Like I'm too tired to fight this anymore. It's so much easier to give in, but you know, it's not, it's not worth it in the long run. We do have so much to live for and yes, you know, I think we get so overwhelmed with the future and shaping who we are and who we want to be and just all the decisions we, you know, have to make that we get scared and instead we focus on just our primal instincts, which is survive, is to survive and is to like, just on food, just on eating, just on, you know, the basics because we don't want to deal with all that other crap. We don't want to deal with all the decisions and stuff so um it's so much easier to focus on your eating disorder so you don't have to think about all of that and think about feelings <laughs> I know feelings <laughs> they're scary <laughs> but um I don't know so even though I was like really psycho last night I'm so happy that I actually felt those feelings and got them out um and something else that came up that was kind of interesting is in therapy and family week at Remuda, we talk about, um, uh, what kind of family communication style your family has. And I don't remember all the other styles. Um, but I remembered, <laughs> um, the style that my family so clearly fit into, which is, um, we, our family works best in crisis mode. Our family communicates best in crisis mode. I don't think our family knows how to act not in crisis mode. 
Like I honestly don't know if my family knows how to communicate any other way because we've known how to communicate like that since, you know, when my brother was born, when I was two and a half. From then on, it was like crisis mode and it wasn't just him, it was all these other things that happened and then my eating disorder, you know, just continues the crisis mode communication. And so, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking about that. Like, how do you change the way your family communicates um, into a healthy way? Because I don't think communicating in crisis mode all the time is necessarily healthy. Um, I think it's great that we can communicate well during crisis mode. But what happens when life is normal? We just, I mean, I don't know. So, I don't know if you guys have any ideas. Um, but I think... I think, you know, it has to be a family thing to work on, and it can't just be one person, like, your entire family has to be, like, in for it and be like, okay, let's try to, let's try to make our family and communication style, like, healthy and well-rounded, so. Okay, sorry, that was, like, the longest rant ever, and I don't even remember half of what I talked about, but it felt good to get it out, so, um, I will talk to you guys later. Um, thanks for your comments and your feedback and your support. You have no idea. It's amazing. I love it. <sighs> okay. Oh, yeah. And guess what, guys? Halloween is in less than a week. Do you remember my video from last Halloween? Oh, yes. Let's hope it's not a repeat. <laughs> um, fingers crossed. Maybe I'll make a preparation video for what we can do to um, save ourselves from catastrophe. <laughs> Anyway, okay. Love you guys. Bye. Oops. It didn't stop.